we know uh, that we all live in a very tense uh, environment that affects our health, that affects our metabolism negatively. Now, I empathize with that, and trust me, I'm going to offer a solution. And when you go home, you're going to think hard about this. Um, hello, I'm Devanjan Sigdar. I am a veterinary doctor by training, a scientist by passion. Um, and as you can tell from my thick Texan accent, I was born in Dallas. <laughs> no, who am I kidding? Uh, <clears throat> I was born, in, uh, born and raised in India, and uh, I chose to do a PhD in genetic engineering. Now, uh, a caution there was I, was I was never, ever studious, never studious. So much so that uh, my PhD mentor actually called me once in his office and said, Dev, you know, you, you are fantastic. You're a fantastic actor. You, you are such a good performer. You played drums so well. You're such a good musician. You will do so much better if you join Bollywood. <laughs> but things change. Things change. And so did, so, so did my priorities. And I happened to meet my wife, Kiran. And that really focused uh, me in my life. I knew what to and how to uh, put my energy one at a time. And rest is history. 14 years later, I'm standing on this most prestigious podium, talking to the most involved, most intelligent audience about a problem that affects a billion people on Earth. So the number you're looking, looking at is one billion. This is this is a problem of overweight. And personally speaking, my parents constitute a statistics within. Now, 300 million of these are clinically obese. So the first number is 1 billion, which is one sixth of Earth's population. And in America, uh, we have higher precedence of obesity. And in fact, with each passing day, with each passing moment, this this, the, the prevalence of obesity is increasing and steepening, uh, which suffice to say that we are increasingly living in an obesogenic environment. Now, <clears throat> why are we fat? Th the answer is very simple. If you indulge in high calorie food and lead a life that discourages physical activity, you are bound to be fat. Now, a lot of research is being done in, on obesity and metabolic disorders, um, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes. But clearly, our current best is not good enough. We need to have new approaches. We need to harness new, approach, uh, new approaches. We need to exploit new approaches, um, which dictates taking some new action uh, take, taking, which dictates shifting our views, probably a totally fundamental shift in the way that scientists and drug makers understand how, what causes diabetes, what causes obesity. And today's talk illustrates one such example. The idea was conceived about a year back in my lab, a new idea and how it was born out, and what would be the impact of this idea if it works out. So here we go. You need to know what is the price of obesity. It, it is a major risk for cardiovascular diseases, uh, diabetes, and obesity. And if you are morbidly obese, your chances of dying of obesity or related disorder is up by 300%. But it's, it's just not a health risk. It's also a burden to your wallet. It cost the nation $100 billion, and individually it cost you $5,000 a year. Many of us constantly struggle to lose weight or, or to keep that extra pound away. But there are people who, who do not have to consciously try anything, and they, they, they are still lean. 
when I look at these individuals, they remind me of uh, our younger selves when we could virtually eat anything and everything and metabolize without, without, without putting an extra pound. So what is that these individuals have? Why are these lean individuals lean? Why do they resist gaining weight? And, and many of us have to struggle uh, in the absence of uh, that blessed factor, whatever that is. So the question is, why are lean peop leaner people leaner? Why do they resist gaining weight? Y we all know that if you balance this equation, you'll balance your weight, okay? But what I am proposing is that there is this factor X which exists in us in certain population, and having this factor X will make you more resistant uh, towards weight gain, will make you leaner. Now, energy that you spend goes towards maintaining your physiology, breathing, waking up, sleeping, exercising, so on and so forth. Existence of this factor, X, will help you mimic exercise kind of spending energy. In other words, if you have this factor X, you'll be spending more and more energy. Now, here I'm going to introduce a, a factor which we'll call orexin. So just bear with me. Orexin is a brain hormone. It's a brain hormone that I am proposing is your factor X, all right? And this is a hormone that helps melt your fat. And this is, this is, this is the two phases of fat. The, the happy face that you see is called brown fat, okay? And it's brown, it looks brown because it's loaded with turbo engine. These, are, these turbo engines, these nano engines, are actually the powerhouse of the cell, which is called mitochondria. Again, there, there's a lot of similarity between the two in the sense that both the fat cells uh, store fat within them, but the brown fat, which is your friend, has the turbo engine, whereas the white fat, which is the face of your misery, which basically wiggles around your belt, sticks to all the wrong places, chokes your heart, chokes your vein, arteries, till you die. This, this face is devoid of any, 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 any turbo engine. So it, all it does is store, store, store. It's a personal storage machine. So next, you're going to ask me, how, 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 how distinct they are, how do they look, if you, if you take a deeper uh, and a closer look at this. So this is how your brown fat looks under the microscope. The optically blank spherical region, the white spheres that you see, are the, are the fat, your fuel, that is stored in, the, in this brown fat. Uh, the red things that you notice are the engines, the nano engines that burns the fat that accumulates. The white fat, on the other hand, is just loaded with fat, as I mentioned earlier. It doesn't have the engine to burn the fat. Now, what you're looking at is, is a type of scan that can detect the amount of brown fat that exists. The dense black uh, spots that you see in this guy demonstrates the presence of brown fat. Now, one thing that you should know, and I'm going to introduce here, the more brown fat you have, leaner you would be, okay? Because you are burning energy. So, you would think, then this guy is very unfortunate. He doesn't have any brown fat. Whereas this guy is blessed, he has this, he has brown fat, he would be spending more energy. But it turns out, <coughs> they are the same guy. The only difference is, this guy, this scan is taken at room temperature, and this scan is taken after he was exposed to cold temperature for 45 minutes, okay? And you wonder why Colorado is the least obese state. <laughs> so here is the concept in a very, very simplistic term. This is your fat storage in your, in your, around your abdomen. This is connected to the brown fat which is present somewhere around your shoulder blades and around your vertebra. Now, if the turbo engine starts, keeps on working, and if it's very, very active, what you're going to do is to suck the fat away. Now, what, what does this brain hormone do in our body? 
what is this normal function? This was discovered about 10 years back. Okay? This is a very interesting hormone because it controls two distinct pleasures of our life. <laughs> when the hormone is low, it's the easy time for us. <coughs> when the hormone is high, it's time to dig in. And if there is problem in the balance of uh, this hormone, you get all sorts of metabolic problems. <coughs> Here I'm going to show why I think that we have discovered this factor X. So what we do is we take orexin, this hormone, and spray the cells, normal cells. And the question we ask is, can we transform these normal cells with brown fat characteristics, right? So can we engineer new type of cells out of these normal cells? When we take a look microscopically, this is what we see. And the red spots that you see are the fat droplets that accumulates after you add this hormone. What you're looking at under the microscope, these are your normal cells, okay? Now you stain them with lipid staining dye, the fat staining dye. You don't see anything here. Now you s try staining them with a dye that identifies the nano engines. You might or you might not see anything here. Now the actual ex experiments start. You make the nice cocktail, expose yourselves to this hormone, and then quiz if there is any transformation. And this is what you see. You start accumulating oil, the fuel. And you also start accumulating the turbo engine. What you basically have is a, is a jet fuel and the jet engine. Your V12 engine is ready to uh, burn energy at a very, very uh, revved up state. Normally, when you have orexin, your fats will be taken away from the storage that you have around your abdomen. But when this hormone does not exist, uh, there is no drainage for the fat. So energy can either be created or not be destroyed. It can only be transformed. So where does the fuel energy, the fat that is stored in your body and burned by the brown fat go? It turns out the fuel energy is transformed into heat. And what is this heat doing in your body? The heat is, is utilized to maintain your body temperature. So when you have more of this hormone, your body temperature is going to be higher. When there is less of this hormone, your temperature will be lower, maybe 0.2 degrees, 0.5 degrees, but you will be, you will be storing that energy instead of burning it. <coughs> this is what your fat looks like under the microscope, brown fat, loaded with the fuel. Now when you add this hormone into the body, it starts melting. Now, this is our little furry friend. And this furry friend does not have this hormone within it, okay? And look how fat he is. And now you add orexin, and he becomes leaner. So where are we now? Uh, we think that this hormone has, has a great relevance to obesity uh, in humans. So we are collaborating with various hospitals uh, that I have lined up here. We are measuring the blood levels of this hormone and measuring the brown fat activity. And if everything holds up, we are going to uh, take, the, take it to the clinical therapeutics. And we think it's going to take another six to seven years to do that. So the early results have started coming in, and we think about 15 to 20% of human uh, have low erection levels. Uh, so what, what, what is the objective then? This is, this is one billion. I'm going to create a small dent, which is going to uh, at least touch 10 million lives if this concept holds up. And in, in America, in our country, we think this number is not going to be one, one, one in four. If my concept lives up, it's going to be one in six. Now, don't get <coughs> too happy uh, because I, ha I have projected something which is like exercise in a pill. I am not promoting bad eating habits. I am not promoting stop exercising. There is nothing, nothing that can replace exercise and good eating habits. Uh, our discovery is dedicated to those for whom a sim simple change in the lifestyle is insufficient. And for those few who are looking for a few cosmetic changes, 
in, in, in their body weight, uh, eight pounds, 10 pounds, without having to exercise, without changing their food habit, I have a message for you. Move to Colorado. <laughs> Be cool and lose weight. Thank you.